The next item of business is consideration of motion 10324 in the name of Joe Fitzpatrick on behalf of the Parliamentary Bureau setting out a revision to the business programme for today. Could I ask any member who wishes to speak against the motion to press the request to speak button now, please? And I call on Joe Fitzpatrick to move the motion. Moved. Thank you. No member is asked to speak against the motion, and therefore I will now put the question to the Chamber. The question is that motion number 10324, in the name of Joe Fitzpatrick, be agreed to. Are we all agreed? We are. The motion is therefore agreed to. The next item of business is topical questions. Question one, Richard Simpson. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. To ask the Scottish Government what steps it is taking to ensure that people with motor neurone disease are not charged for care. Cabinet Secretary Alex Neil. Presiding Officer, the Scottish Government is clear that people who are terminally ill should not be charged for care at home. We are working closely with COSLA's Charging Guidance Group to ensure that this is the case for everyone in Scotland and that there is consistency across all local authorities. We want to ensure that everyone who requires care has access to the highest standards of care in every setting, their own home or a care home. That's why we are integrating health and social care to provide a more responsive and joined up service for all those who require care. Richard Simpson. I thank the Cabinet Secretary for his answer. But don't we have a pattern here? If you're in a hospice or in a hospital, terminal care is undoubtedly free without question. In the community, there is currently a postcode lottery of charging, which has been exposed by the recent motor neurone disease survey. Because there is no clarity in existing guidance as to what constitutes terminal care, a lottery made even more unfair by differences for different age groups. With all these dividing lines uh, making, it, uh, making it worse, would you agree with me that South Ayrshire's definition is especially problematic? Isn't a requirement to determine when someone has four weeks to live before they get free support uh, simply unacceptable? As a doctor, I could not make such an arbitrary judgment. So will he establish that uh, clarity with COSLA rapidly? Can he give us a timetable for when it'll be, when it'll be issued? And what monitoring will then take place to ensure that all those with terminal care receive the care that he and I would both wish them to have? Cabinet Secretary. Presiding officer, can I first of all gently correct the member? I think he's referring to East Ayrshire and not to South Ayrshire. Uh, but, however, in terms of the general gist of his remarks, I agree with. I think there's far too wide variation between councils in how this policy is being applied. Now, the member will remember going away back to 2002, the then administration, and we have carried on with the policy, rather than lay down central charging or, and do so by statute or secondary legislation, that it was agreed that COSLA would work with councils to try to get as consistent approach as possible. And I've made it absolutely clear to COSLA that I am not happy with the current situation in terms of how terminally ill people are charged and the wide variations between different councils as highlighted by the situation in East Ayrshire as quoted by the member. Uh, COSLA are working at it through the charge guidance group. But it, let me make it absolutely clear, if agreement cannot be reached and if we cannot uh, get this problem tackled on a voluntary basis by councils, I am prepared to use what reserve powers I've got in order to ensure that it is because the current situation, I don't think, is acceptable. Richard Simpson. Uh, can I welcome the further elucidation by the Cabinet Secretary and his correction, my apologies for, to South Ayrshire for in that regard. But isn't the situation actually going to get worse despite his undertaking to take reserve powers if necessary? Currently in England, there are 59,000 fully funded NHS continuing care patients, and that includes people who are terminally ill. These are patients only in the community. Continuing care in England only applies uh, uh, to, to the community. In Scotland, we only have 400 currently, uh, and not 5,000 as, as it would occur if the criteria were the same uh, as in England. So doesn't the Cabinet Secretary recognise that actually with what's going to be introduced in April 2015, and with the increasing anomalies, which really can't be fixed by a review here or an agreement there, the MND survey has really exposed another of these. Uh, it, it, don't we really now need to seriously, as all parties, consider a major rethink when we're joining health and social care as to how we're funding the whole system? 
Cabinet Secretary. Officer, can I first of all caution against direct comparisons with south of the border because obviously south of the border does not have free personal care and about 77,000 people in Scotland benefit from free personal care which this parliament endorsed unanimously. Uh, secondly, uh, as part of the re extension of the review of residential care services, I have agreed with COSLA to extend the remit of the working party who carried out the review of residential care to now carry out a review of all aspects of care at home because there are a number of issues, including the charging of terminally ill patients, which require modernization and a simpler method and one that's more consistent. <coughs> so we do not have a postcode lottery across the country. And it's looking also at issues like 15 minute visits and so on. So I absolutely agree that we need a very clear residential care strategy and care at home strategy, both of which relate to each other, and that we need to have that agreed before the formal start date for integration of adult health and social care on a statutory basis from the 1st of April next year, and ourselves in COSLA are working towards that objective. Christina McKelvey. Thank you very much, President Officer. Macmillan Cancer Support this week revealed that the results of a survey which showed the unacceptable waiting times for UK Government's new personal independence payments for people with cancer and the impact this has on their well-being. Does the Minister share my concern that people with motor neuron disease may also be facing unacceptable delays in receiving these payments? And will the Scottish Government approach the UK Government and ask them to halt the further rollout of personal independent payment, a benefit that is causing significant anxiety amongst clinic? And let's not forget that Lord Freud, who was appointed by Tony Blair, brought about this and is continuing this. Cabinet Secretary. Presiding Officer, it's clear that the UK Government's cuts and changes to the welfare system, including the change from disability living allowance to personal independence payment, are causing significant anxiety and distress to people in Scotland. It is completely unacceptable that some of the most vulnerable in our society are not getting the support they need. I believe the solution is for the Scottish Parliament to have control over welfare matters. We have made it clear through the White Paper that if elected the first government of an independent Scotland, we will halt the further rollout of personal independent payments, and this will allow the first government of an independent Scotland to design a welfare system to meet Scotland's needs. Nanette Milne. Thank you, President Officer. Um, I find it deeply concerning, and I agree with what's been said already um, about what's happening to patients with MND, and clearly from what the Cabinet Secretary says, uh, this would be applying to other p patients with terminal conditions um, across the board. So would the, the Cabinet Secretary consider hosting a summit meeting, bringing all interested parties together, of course, but individual councils perhaps, to really get thrashed this out and really seriously try and get something done about it? Cabinet Secretary. Presiding officer, I'd be more than happy to convene such a meeting, uh, but I think the appropriate time to do that is once the working party, which isn't just including the Scottish Government in COSLA, it includes Scottish Care, the independent sector, and it includes third sector representatives as well, and includes users groups as well so I think they're the appropriate body to work out a set of recommendations on the way forward and I'd be more than happy to host whatever meeting we require to try to build a consensus in this area because I think it's in the interest of everybody that we do try to get a consensus on charging policy throughout the country and within this chamber. Jim Hume. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I welcome the Cabinet Secretary's acknowledgement that, that there has been a disgraceful anom anomaly existing here and that he will, will take steps to ensure uniformity across the country by all local authorities. I don't think any of us want a situation where a charity has to reveal that some local authorities are refusing to fund personal care for Scots. Will the Cabinet Secretary today promise to ensure that no terminal patient uh, who requires personal care, care will ever have to pay for it again? And will he also commit uh, in the review just to ensure that we know how many patients have been affected by the refusal of local authorities to pay for personal care? And will he also investigate possible compensation packages for those families affected and perhaps those who have already paid out? Cabinet Secretary. Officer, these are primarily issues for the working party to look into and to try and quantify the scale of the issue, both in relation to the number of recipients, actual and forecast number of recipients for future years, as well as to look at the forecast costs and the funding arrangements uh, for future charging policy. 
We should make a clear distinction between the formal policy of free personal care, which at the moment applies to over 65-year-olds, and the policy of waiving charges, which applies to under 65-year-olds who don't qualify for free personal care, although obviously people who are terminally ill do qualify for free personal care in the formal sense as well. And it's the application of that policy that was this, has been the subject, I think, of most controversy around the very useful survey carried out by MND Scotland. And I think we should all take that uh, to heart and uh, have it as our objective to make sure that by the time we get to the integration of adult health and social care, we have a more sane regime and a more consistent regime and a fair regime for all charging policy in relation to all aspects of social care throughout Scotland. Many thanks. That concludes that item of business. And we'll now turn to the next item of business. I'll allow a few seconds for members to change places. <laughs>